as of now. So welcome to the house, well, well, the, I guess, rangers, or, or it might be posted into the culture, it might be posted onto Urban Agoge, it might be posted anywhere, but this is the ranger, this is the first COVID-19 podcast. So yeah. Yeah. Of, of the apocalypse, um, the financial yeah. apocalypse yeah. brought about by panicking people. Yeah. And I just want to say, called it, <laughs> <laughs> called it on television, didn't just call it on our own podcast, called it on, you know, there's the thing that they were asking me about on the UK Preppers thing was, what do you fear yeah. most? And I went, well, what? scared <laughs> stupid people. And they said, well, how would that come about? And I said, probably something like a pandemic. Because nobody's more, you know, yeah. there's no p fear like plague, fear like no fear I know. All the I people are so unappealing. <laughs> I'm going to play over some of them that I wrote a long time ago, and I was a free and public. Yeah. Um, you go to an awesome article called Income.io, and you learn the world and look at the world's free. And you will go, well, I can just write it today for my own life. I can just write it for my yeah. So stop doing stupid things. Um, oh, there's a what your outcome is. I mean go forward. Well, yeah. But there's a there's the bog roll apocalypse um, has been yeah. on everybody's yeah. mind, and one of the yeah. weird things about it is that let me just find it. There was an app that actually tells you how much loo roll you need. Oh, it's, uh, that, okay. There's a there's a loo roll calculator. <laughs> um, and it's at howmuchtoiletpaper.com. And, I'll, and if I'm collating this ideally, I should be putting together a, a Word document or a Liberate Office document. Fuck you, Word. And I'll put I'll put that link in the thing for this podcast. There we go. How much How much yeah. Okay. And uh, according to this, um, I I it actually admonishes you if you've got more toilet paper than uh, than you should have. And according to this, if I'm on my own, my, my toilet my toilet paper will last me 187 days. There you go. Toilet visits per day. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, but you're in a you're in a family household. I was forced to buy a 16 pack because none of the four packs or the eight packs or the nine packs were left in stock, and I genuinely had I was just about to run out of loo roll. I'm sorry, you have to go with advanced options though, because it's trying to give you five pieces per trip, right? Mm. And yeah. uh, I don't think that's right for it. Yeah, average number of wipes per trip, it. probably two sheets per wipe. I've put in six sheets on a roll. Uh, it's probably not that many, probably about 150. Days of quarantine, 1400. And then it tells me, not everybody is able to get us to a store and stock up on toilet roll. Don't be selfish. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm a bad person. Supposedly, I will last 207 days. Yeah, but you, you share a house with a whole family, including you know, five people, and two females. That's so. still like 50. That's still 50. I'm like, I don't, yeah, I okay, so the solution is if you don't have enough toilet paper, what's the solution? Okay, you can go and look up what the Romans did. You can go and look up a thing called a tabo, which is the thing they use in the Philippines, which is when you basically watch them. So they're the positive outcome. Okay, we can laugh at you all we like, but the outcome is actually. Um, find other means. You know, the, the rest of the world doesn't use toilet paper the way the Western world does. Yeah. Find other means. Clean yeah. yourself. Yeah, I'm just trying to Wash your hands extra well. You know? Yeah. It brings you to the next point, doesn't it? You know, we all wash their hands properly. The virus, the end virus, you know, pathogens would not spread the way they do. Yeah. But people need to wash their Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. How many years can you have to wash your hands properly? I'm just wondering if I'm able to. How do you send an invite? How do you do that again? To what? To this or to Rangers or oh. else. Can I send an invite? Have I got the power to? Who, who are you sending it to? I was going to send it to um, 
Wrigley Table Bambi because she was talking to me. Oh, yeah. Well, I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. Just in case she wants to go online because, you know, if we do, we are doing this as a podcast, so, you know. Yes. Uh, I can send her a quick message, but if you can send her an invite, for some reason, probably best, really, I can't send out invites all that easily. Oh, I like my clicky keyboard. Yeah, it's really loud, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, so we've got a we've got a, a word document started because this was just slung together at the last minute. We haven't done anything as a result of the coronavirus because we've all been watching the news going, shit! So, Donald Trump's about to do a video conference at FEMA with the nation's govern governors to ensure they have access to resources. And the Americans are already doing quantitative easing. Well, they're saying they're going to do quantitative easing. Yep, well, the Australians just started by the Australian the Federal Reserve, anyway, whatever it's called, yeah. exactly the same thing. The place where they, they think up your debt fiat currency, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what it is. Um, yeah, they started that today. Oh, have they started sending yeah. out checks? They haven't started sending out checks, but they've dropped the, um, they've had two red cuts. Yeah, all the major interest rates are cut in. Um, yeah. Our government is still just trying to protect the people that it thinks are like them. So, huge business owners. There's like a three hundred and thirty billion pound um, government loan scheme been set up, and uh, yeah. people who with who own their own homes are going to get uh, a mortgage holiday, which doesn't mean they don't pay that money. They just pay it later. It's a deferment. But like, yeah. fuck you if you're renting or you work in an ordinary job or you work for minimum wage or you work in the hospitality industry. Screw you guys. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah so I'm eagerly waiting Uncle Boris doing his press conference at 5 o'clock today I'm sure Glorious Leader will morning. come up with a bunch of useful stuff and not say stupid yeah. shit I don't, I don't hold much hoping no not at all mm. that hasn't been going mm. I'm sorry I don't see you have an ad I don't know why I have an ad yeah, trust in God but tie up your camel time but uh, what I would say is my favourite thing, the only the only good I'm seeing in this is that all the people I know and care about are actually pretty well set for this. Mm. You know, I don't know anybody that hasn't got access to resources, so I feel pretty lucky in that. But that still leaves a lot of people. Yes, and that's the problem, is that um, it doesn't change... Yeah. So yeah, I don't uh have you sent Wrigley right. Table Bambi a, a link? No, I can't I can't do it. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, disconnect, go live. Uh, can we send her an invite to House Ordos? That's what I'm trying to do now. So if I go to oh, where's Rangers? Yes, the Boom Rangers. Help me channel. Can't da -da 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 -da. settings. No. 
How do we send an invite? Mentions. No. Uh, pin, muting a channel. Mute channel. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, here we are. Just found it. Oh, invite to server. Rangers, Church of Server, Rank Media. Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got an invite? Yeah, Alright, well we've lost digital whiskey. Uh, how do we do that? Invite to server, what's that? We could move it to Rangers. And then I, we oh, could do it. Oh, there you go. It just got very loud. For some reason, my thing has just dropped off. I will we'll swap off to Rangers and then we'll go from there. Okay. I'll see you over there in a second. I, uh, let's connect. Going over to Rangers. Talky talk. I'm here. Right. This is just to just to bring you up to speed. This is actually going to be a podcast, so you may want oh. to, you may want to regulate what you say accordingly. We well, can do it either, but not very good. You say accordingly, and then laugh a bit after. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to turn down your microphone just a little bit in settings, just about twenty percent, because you're very loud. Uh, give me. Give me a minute. Yeah, because you are. A um, is that in help point? Is that better? A little bit lower. A uh, bit more. Uh, actually, a bit, a little bit higher. And you have to say something, otherwise we won't know. Um, something. <laughs> a little bit lower, and say, and just sit where you're going to sit, or where you're going to be in front of the microphone. Um, That's it. This much? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If, Sorry. Um, if we're too quiet, I mean, uh, sit a little bit further away from your microphone because if you're right into it, you'll just blow out all the recording levels and it will sound terrible. I am sat a little away from my microphone, but I'm just going to move it over there. Is that better? You're still a bit loud. Or is that too quiet? No, you're still a bit loud. Is it input volume or output volume that I need to be? Input volume. It's on about halfway yeah, drop right it, now. Drop it down a bit a chunk and say something. Uh, how's that? A bit lower. That's now on 15%. I'm not sure that I can drop it. Yeah. Okay, the, go into output volume. Okay, Drop hold it. a minute, I know what's, what the problem is. What's that? You might want to go into your sound settings. Is that better? Yeah, no, go into your sound settings. Are you using a Windows laptop or your... Uh, yes. All right. Yeah, you're. Well. Yeah. Yeah, you're still pretty loud. Okay. In fact, what you could do as a quick fix is turn your microphone round, like it was yesterday. Like that. 
speaking again. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. That's just going to be better for like the audio levels. So the way to fix our problem is the need just to um, have me not know how to use a microphone. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but don't lean into like, <laughs> Yeah, try. You're still a bit. No, it, it is. It's better. Well, you do have to speak. We can't tell. No, I didn't speak. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to drop your audio down here. Is that? Yeah, probably better if you do it there. Yeah. Um, because my, my unit is pretty big. Hmm. Okay, Harlequin, you still there? I am still here. Okay, so I'm just going to announce it in Rangers. Uh, da 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 where are we? Dim. All the news for anyone who is listening out to this podcast, you have to listen to like several minutes of human mind health technology. Mm, pretty much. It's a it's a standard we pretty much every single episode. Yeah. This is something that we break something where something's breaking more. But then we can really try to use it to have more for that. Uh yeah. so social isolating Yeah. Uh, it's so quite so social isolating. I don't find it to be a negative. Like I, I'm in the countryside. You know, I, I, everyone's isolated. It's great. Honestly, I, 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 I have one of my actors stuff. Like I have, I have a terminal tutorial that I online as a robot for this issue. And um, and then the question is like you know, what you're doing with um, education and motivation and how this is working. And the third question um, as a choice for answers was. How is everyone feeling? And it's just like not how are you feeling about COVID 19, how are you feeling about the course, how are you feeling doing it, it's just how are you feeling. And it's interesting to see the different reactions of people's different responses mm. to the question of how are you feeling. Because well, I'm, I'm just like, oh yeah, like it's a half nine, like, you know, got very good for everything's fine, you know, we're all just getting on the wind button, you know, but, you know it's quite right. And that's why people are sitting there and they're doing wind button, it's actually, you know, it's more interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a novel solution, you know. I don't see, you know, it's it's great for uh, for the perspective thing. <laughs> I'll see how we're playing Minecraft. Find people as well. Um, kind of interesting because there's kind of um being a young hip millennial as we keep spreading. I'm not a millennial, but <laughs> well, I am. Be <laughs> Keep um a sort of like kind of thing, like that. but I'm I'm on Twitter and I check it quite a lot. And people are reacting very differently to the effects of social isolation, such as the fish coming back to Venice. Yeah, um, that's good. And it's good, but people are sort of saying like. Oh, we're the problem, and then people go, no, capitalism is the problem, people are the problem. And it's, it's just, people are going pretty weird about um, the effects social isolation is suddenly having on the world. Um, although the air pollution happening due to the lack of cars driving around is pretty good, I have to say. Yeah, well, I, saw, I saw a poll about China talking about um, air pollution and being a forward because of this happening and everyone being locked up or not locked up, people being shut in. Mm -hmm. Businesses shutting up as China is a massive pollution level. Um, no, there's not many people who are talking about the fact that there was a prison break though. No. Um, well, I, and I was reading today in Iran or Syria, I think it was in Iran, um, a bunch of people were actually released early from their, from their um, they were actually released early from their, from their, from their prison so oh. and then at the same time, and then the same reflection, you know, you've had just utter and total trust and stupidity being put out. Um, people, you know, uh, the president by the little Paul was open, um, commented today on YouTube about a uh, conversation with uh, you know, the network on YouTube talking about Agenda 21 and, um, and, you know, all of these sort of like crack things that come about people are spreading and spreading and spreading and it's good out, you know, but look, and their outcome was, you know, the two hours of building is quite, 
everyone to up or be fine, or as fine as possibly can be, you know, we go up in the pool every day, every year it's fine to be bad, but it's not going to be as bad, we can make it less bad. And the other one, the other virus, of course, is the stupidity of humans. So it's the stupidity of humans in the virus, and it needs to be catchy. And we all need to calm down and not have uh, quite too many responses that are really going on. To be fair, if the big revelation is humans are stupid, I, I think some of us caught on quite a while ago. <laughs> but, yeah, it is, um, it is interesting to see how people are reacting, and it's also so hard to see a lot of the people I've, um, I've been, like, the, I hesitate to say influences, because there are more people who just um, make their own costumes and do social media stuff. Um, some people, and also people like Amanda Palmer, it's heartening to see how they're reaching out to the community they know they have. Saying, so, well, look, guys, we can all be here for each other, just stay safe, do the th things that you've been told to do, stay indoors, and take care of each other. And they're still reaching out know, almost every day. Yeah, and the response to it. And the response that we need to have as a, as a civilization to any of this. When things like this happen, whether it's this or whether it's the next thing or whether it's the last thing, you know, if we all have the collective response of not being stupid, whether that be not being racist, not being homophobic, not being transphobic, not being, you know, an ass to people because they look differently or because they're not from a local town or whatever, um, that's all positive. You know, if we all just bang up our grand or um, or, our, or our pop, and we all, you know, basically did what we were advised to do, and we all stopped being stupid, then this would pass over the you know, without any, without any great sharp or issue. You know, we're always going to have people die of illness. No illness is going to be preventable. Um, there will always be issues, you know, watching and things. Um, but the response of, you know, let's go and scrap the world by, uh, by buying 10 million holes of four packs to help it. I mean, I have a very big, I have a big pack of toilet paper, but it's just kind of like a car pack. And that's just because yeah, everyone, everyone, um, everyone right now has a big, everyone right now has a big roll of toilet paper because, like, in Australia, the only toilet paper you can buy now is a 30 pack roll. It's the only one that's locked in there. So if we're going to buy a roll of toilet paper, get 32 of them. To be fair, the only reason I bought a big pack in the first place is because um, I have cameras. So, um, about five people use my bathroom on a weekly basis, so we kind of go through a bit. It's made it really difficult though, um, with socialisation and self quarantine going on. I think the biggest problem that I'm finding is that uh, my carers, I don't know when any of them are going to have to say, um, yeah. one of them's already had to go in quarantine because of family, and that's the scary thing is that I know it's not like I'm, you know, a unicorn in the UK. I'm not the only person with disability and issues who's going to need care, and the care that I need is very low maintenance. There's a lot of people who need a lot more care, 24 hours, um, you know, 24-7. Not 24 hours, but excuse me. 24, 24 mm. I don't know what you mean. But it, it's that, you know, it's that response of... A great example is people here in South Australia, where they set up a couple of different um, virus testing stations, and the virus testing for those people who they know have been um, associated with overseas travel, they have like their, their symptoms are in more than one of the symptoms, etc., etc., etc. People who actually require specific help for this disease. And everyone else has been directed to call your doctor or call the nurses on the phone call or call the doctors on call helpline and then sort the problem out that way and you know, people that they're going to actually need to, please call an ambulance, I'm going to be doing a show again. They're all calling up, 
lying about what their symptoms are, lying about where they've been or whether they've been able to or who they had contact with, and then going and trying to get a test, which they obviously don't need. So, you know, it's, it's I mean, it now, it's but now, when you, when, you know, do you want the test now, when you can basically say, I don't have the disease, or do you want the test when you actually need it, or would you rather that test be used by someone who does need it, who might be able to prevent, you know, a couple hundred people from dying, like a doctor? Yeah, it's, but, you know, stupid isn't stupid, does. The advice that we're getting is pretty much the advice that you'd have if you have a, um, the flu or a cold. And it's, you can stay at home and wait them out if you are not at risk. Like, if you are at risk, go in and get the test. If you're not in the at risk circle, don't do that. Have a week off work, chill out. I think hmm. only I say only it, yeah, it's yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. We've got hard and the only response that we have as a collective species is to seemingly muck it up, which is a problem. And that and that is an issue that we have. How do we educate everyone to have a common response? I like this one, I'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, the, if this is just a dry run for something more deadly, if if the world governments can get together and just say, right, this is the procedure from here on in, we can't, you know, firebomb the entire economy of the entire planet every time there's a fairly voracious type of flu. You know, it's only because people have panicked. You know, there's no real reason to close the schools unless, you know, what they could have done is gone, right, okay, so the teachers run a good risk of catching COVID-19 because they're surrounded by children that may or may not be carrying it, but we don't know. They could have just expanded class sizes or, you know, or done a whole bunch of other things, but because, you know, social pressure was on them to close the schools, they closed the schools. Mm. Um, Rather than saying, there is a group of people that are at risk that are going to need to, to isolate themselves, and if you're feeling really dreadful, don't come in, then, you know, that would have been a much faster thing. You know, we're pretty much seeing universally it's the elderly and people with underlying health conditions that are at risk, and those are the people that are dying. You know, it's like, well, there is a group that we must isolate. However unfair that that group feels it is, they can either isolate or, you know, run the risk of being killed by this thing. There's been quite a few losses already that I've seen again on the Twitter feeds that people are talking about. And instead of being not saying that it's a reaction, it's a very political reaction. People are tagging the president's Twitter in every single one of these and telling him, it, telling him it's his fault. Oh, I think, uh, you know, everybody that's that's contributed to the panic has a certain amount of responsibility to bear. Um, honestly, it's one of these situations where it, it's kind of like instead of figuring out whose fault it is, maybe we should be more concentrating on making sure it doesn't happen again. Well, I think it's, it's way, way too soon for that. You know, but people are acting like, you know, the economy is not going to recover. People's rights are being taken away. Well, this has happened. There's lots of little secret little laws being brought in all over the world to make it easier for governments to institute some kind of martial law. And more yeah, impressively, the first action of every government is to be to close its borders. So, so the countries of the world are kind of doing their, we need to deal with this on our own, blah, blah, blah. And that's a dead narrative now. We've proved that. If it was possible to close borders and stop the spread of this thing, then we would have stopped it, wouldn't we? But it's not possible, you know, because everything is interconnected. You know, so, you know, and... I don't know if you saw that there was a particularly... I didn't see the reason, but um, I kind of found it a bit funny. Um, there was a HSBC advert here in the UK that um, proudly proclaimed, we are not an island. If anyone else classifies this about the UK, but we, we kind of are an island. 
Yeah, but normally, I mean, that slowed up any spread of any infectious diseases to us, but it doesn't anymore. But no, 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 travel no. is so ubiquitous. I mean, you know, it looks like Qantas um, and uh, Virgin Australia, which are two big airports uh, uh, in Australia, have both basically grabbed off what in and out of the country. Hmm. The borders have been closed into Australia, there will be no more. Hmm. Um, you know, they're, they're, already, they're already talking about closing. They're already. They've already, they've pretty, already, pretty, much already pretty much. They've, they've already pretty much yeah. grounded it Qantas's entire flight, so Australia's like, yeah. you know, as cut off as it can be. Well, once um, one person has got into your country with that virus, the potential for an exponential spread, right. and possibly an infection of yeah. people that didn't get it first time round, that self-isolated but weren't are not are not now immune, will mean that it will flare up later. You know, Honestly, it's, it only um, makes you tempted to, you know, sit, sit in one room and try to pretend that it isn't happening. Just, just sit in the room and play more like the online pandemic game. Yeah. But it's, you know, it, it's the thing so is, is it's just not that dangerous. The best thing would be for everybody that's not at risk of being in real, you know, trouble needing intensive care to just get the frigging thing isolate themselves for a couple of weeks, feel shitty, like you say, watch Netflix, make a piece of art, do something with this extra time that you've been given, and and then, you know, then most people don't have it. I mean, you're still going to get infections among the elderly because there will be people that haven't had it, will get it late, but we can vastly reduce it. And that would still mean that there was ICU facilities available for when they did. But when you when you see some countries acting really kind of like, well, not countries, I don't think the people in the countries are to blame, but you get, you know, the governments of those countries acting weird and selfish, like Trump offering to buy exclusive access to the next coronavirus vaccine, which is just ludicrous. You know, and you've got countries that must be under-reporting their... their well, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's 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 and none of them are going to do that, and in order to, to remain in power, they're not quarantining, not quarantining their elderly. So it's, it's, it's a gigantic level of selfishness, and a, a, de a desire to cling to power is prolonging this, if you want to be paranoid. <laughs> That one scene in Good Omens, where, um, sort of, where I was going to say, what did he say? To make them surround me, be kind to each other. Ah, yeah, that would do it. Every time, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Peter Latton, who is the Deputy Prime Minister, I think, I don't know, but he's part of the people the part of the medieval side of the street over here. He was, he'd been in the States, he'd been directly, um, he'd been found to have the virus, he'd been back in the Parliament and had meetings with people in Parliament, the Parliament wasn't shut down, the people weren't socially isolating themselves. So, there you have a group of politicians who are specifically not isolating themselves, not doing the right thing, you know. You have a little better thing here. Our health minister did that. Mm -hmm. Our health minister was tested positive for um, coronavirus. To meetings with people. Yeah, yeah, exactly the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, not it, it's just sometimes you look at someone and it, it, you wonder if, if you can look through them. Uh, and see instead of like political ideas and stuff, you'll see daylight right through the other side. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we don't know whether London will be locked down or not. I'm sorry, I don't know. Thank you, he's trying to make it very relief to go and said um, that the government for instance said there is zero prospect of restrictions to travel, travel in and out of London. Yeah. Downing Street has shut down much of the speculation over the coronavirus. Because London's where the money comes from. Yeah, yeah. Of them going to work in the, uh, in the bank. Yeah, but it's also the, these levels of reported cases. Yeah. You know, I mean, there was, there's a doctor on YouTube who's been doing a lot of uh, daily updates. I'll see if I can find his name. And he's like uh, super reassuring. He's obviously retired, but he's obviously a, a doctor that's been in medical practice and stuff like that, just giving the uh, the facts and figures as he sees it. And I'll see if I can find the guy's name. But he, he, he's basically said what I was thinking. You know, when you see these numbers of reported cases, it's a guy called Dr. John Campbell. And I will see if he's serious about it. I'm going to kill that. Uh, I will put though I will put his channel his channel link in the uh, in the the description of this podcast when I upload it. But he's he basically said pretty much um, uh, that you you can basically add a zero or two to every one of those confirmed cases as to the number of people in your country that might have it. Which is what and I was thinking. Because because those are just the people that have gone to hospital yeah. feeling quick and have and have been oh. tested. That's all that is. There's there's millions of people yeah. running around the planet that have got it and are infectious and just haven't had it confirmed. Yeah. Oh, I think um, it's just the fact that the passed away. But before we did, we did have to basically practice um, a bit of isolation because of the chemotherapy he was going through. And he had a compromised yeah. immune system. So, yeah. yeah. So, I don't know what to do, but at the same time, it's. I'm going to do that again. Hmm. Uh, it is sensible. So, here's a come out, here's a um, has come out, and it's a case in Australian border force on Wall Street, won't feed the cat individuals and groups, including supermarket groups. Mm. It's not fair, Copper. We're not allowed to, we're uh, not allowed to, to do, you're not allowed to buy toilet paper. Um, can you believe this? This is a Otherwise, it's true. There's a lot of restrictions being put on at the supermarkets and there's specific hours being a lot of people who are um, in the vulnerable categories. Yeah. Being people with a disability, which um, I'm not sure whether they'll utilise that or not because there's a lot of other people who... Well, also, there's not much point in you, given that your, your, your location's going to have to change some point soon, probably. There's yeah. there's not a lot of point in you buying a lot of groceries because you don't know where you're going to be. Yeah, I do have like a very small stash of basically like waffles and Pringles. It is. <laughs> <laughs> have you got vitamin pills? I've not got vitamin pills. So you you've got a crappy diet and you've got no vitamins. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, I should, ah, here we go. I will now present that list. Do you have canned fruit, though? I have canned fruit. Yeah. Well, that's largely so, the vitamin C and fibre. It does vitamins to make sure they get sturdy. And just, yeah, but I mean, you know, with people self isolating, you've got a chance of people, um, because they might have to isolate for more than two weeks because they're, they're living with their families. You've got people that might get rickets as a result of not going outside. How do you get rickets? Sorry, I have like large gaps in my knowledge, but well, I mean, um, I know some people who might be listening to this podcast who might not know, definitely not me. How do you get rickets? Uh, you need a, a massive drop in vitamin D. You get vitamin D? Sunlight. 
Yeah. So um, it was a very Edwardian oh. disease amongst children. Children especially uh, 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 react very, very fast to a lack of vitamin D. So it makes your bones bend. It, it takes away the rigidity of your bones and they bend under the weight of the human body once they get too soft. So it, what about things that they have in the very uh, places like Iceland, the UV lights? Yeah, I mean that will combat stuff rickets. Stuff like that, do they Yeah. That combats rickets? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. But uh, they were reporting a few years ago that children in Newcastle that didn't go out and play were starting to suffer from early onset rickets. And uh, it's a very Charles Dickens era, you know, um, disease. It's sort of a, an Edwardian, Victorian, you know, pre-Victorian sort of a thing to get that, that poor people used to suffer from because they were working inside factories without windows for like 18 hours a day. It was a pro largely a product of the Industrial Revolution. I think that's probably why I haven't had any problems yet yeah, is because I have a, a uni room that on the wall of it is practically just a window. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, the advice I would give would be, you know, see if you can get down to whatever supermarket you're close to and pick up multivitamins because I think everybody's diet is going to take a nosedive. Yes. Only if you buy them, because the only ones I've got, if you you end up living here, are the boring horse tablet type. Cannot take tablet. Oh, I don't want to. Uh, so I'll be keeping chat. So I'll ask you to put in the show notes. Ladies, um, uh, before my phone, there's a there's a piece of actual scientific uh piece of scientific work done uh, by a and they were talking about the last pandemic we had, or a response to our had, which was um, H1N1, bird flu, and SARS. So, what um, so, you know, they did was actually work out what I, like, they worked out for an Australian diet, so it's depending on where you are, mm. depending on what standardized food you can go to the shop and buy, but it's a really good um, example of um, what you should actually have in store. Um, and what you can get away with. There's, mm. there's actually two lists so of the first table and the second table. I would advise everyone to go look at the second table first, um, which is a lot cheaper. Mm. And it's exactly the point of, you know, the voucher cost for uh, 10 is going on, I guess. Mm. The voucher cost for one person of 10 weeks was $250 Australian. That's mm. about 100 Yeah. It's primarily consisted of whole milk, plain flour, um, oats, canola oil, Dry milk powder or an equivalent. Dry mm. milk, dry milk, dry milk, or um, marmite or an equivalent yeast extract. Yes, marmite if you're a barbarian. Yeah. Marmite, marmite, extract fruit, raw almond, and a multi-vitamin or middle. I never understand the appeal of marmite. It is the food of the gods. It is ambrosia. Okay. Well, have you seen that video where they put like a little bit of money on them for the cheetahs to taste for the first time? The reaction to that? I said Americans are vegemite. It's um, there was a zoo and they decided to see whether their cheetah would like marmite. And we did not. <laughs> he just like his facial looks so like <laughs> His facial expression looked like screwed up and his mouth fell open. And I understand. <laughs> I'd like to offer my condolences to that yeah. teacher. I mean, I'm just going to continue okay. wandering to the shops every so often and picking up things like orange juice and stuff like that. While yeah. I'm working, okay. just, just buying and making people have now. Do you know what I've done? Do you know what I've done? I 
and and he's really terrible kid. Great. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and you never got any further with it, now would be the time. If you got bought any art equipment or you've got any, you know, pencils or anything or you've always wanted to learn to knit and you at one point bought stuff, now would be the time to use all the stuff you got lying around. Been denied. 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 Within my area, mm. um, and it's basically near my other half of this, so I can literally just like the free get it delivered to his house. Bring it to me. Please go. I just want to talk a bit up on my Instagram that they're gonna you know, be doing free deliveries or other things going on because you know people are stuck inside their houses for the most part. Mm. And it's also extra nice of them because if you think about it, quite a lot of their customers do fall into uh, sort of the at risk category. Mm. Well, and I mean, their customers. it's these days, so I mean, most of it is going to be old, older people, isn't it? Don't come to me like this. Well, if you're living with me, you can always teach me to knit. I've never managed to learn. <clears throat> I mean, that would be nice. I, I'd like to teach you how to knit. We'd have to get you like, a pair of needles first, though. Because mm. my needles are currently in use and will be until Christmas. Mm. Oh, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm quite lucky in that I've got loads of creative type stuff lying around. I've got loads of musical instruments, <coughs> loads of you know bits and bobs, loads of art supplies. I recently, I recently got myself a colour pencil. I've got cameras up the yin yang. You know. But if you do end up um, a whole lot together, you know, you could, I can always um, start you on a patchwork blanket. Yeah. If you're old camouflage stuff, make something useful out of it instead of being it lying around. Well, I've got about four yards of camo material. Yeah, this is what I mean. You know, held back against so time of need. And I've got a load of old clothes and t-shirts and trousers and stuff that need to go. So I've got some denim, I've got some canvas, and I've got some bits and bobs. Do you have unused Christmas cards or did you throw them out? No, but I'm sure there's, uh, there's probably old magazines and old pizza cartons that could be pressed into service. If you use um, pizza cartons, I will come for all of you. No, I mean, I mean, the boxes and frozen pizza. Yeah. Oh, frozen pizza, fine. I thought we were literally talking about, like, takeaway pizza boxes. Yeah. If anyone uses takeaway pizza boxes for um, their takeaway pizza boxes, I will come for them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
which is um, a lot um, a creative thing that I've had in mind for a while is sort of making clothes for my doll, Jacob doll, um, and creating like a diorama for her. Mm. Uh, like a, so it looks like she has her own little cottage. Mm. But that would take like a hell of a lot of time and a hell of a lot of supplies. But hey, we certainly like have a hell of a lot of time on our hands. Well, we might do. Yeah. Yeah. We only hope we have one. Yeah. But also, yeah, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just, oh no, we're not sure it's still safe. We're just staying so far so we for a couple more years. Hmm. Well, I've also got I've also got a three D printer to get working. I've got a working one and a and a broken one. Stuff you have is just not fair, you know that, right? Well, you know. I kind of get interested by technology and, you know, but recently I haven't had a lot of time. So there's all sorts of things to learn, but it would be kind of cool if we did something creative, you know, as a species. Like, you should utilize your sinister machine during the apocalypse. Hmm. Yeah, it depends how much time I'm off for, you know, whether I'm off at all. Yeah. That's true. That's a that's a thing to be paying attention to. It's like whether whether we have to we have to isolate mm -hmm. at all. But yeah, it looks like it might be a thing. But we're we're currently at the mercy of our government, you know, because if you know, if my job decides to fire me, there's not a lot I can do about it until normality returns. So I'm not too fussed about carrying on working because it means I've still got like a bit of an income, even though it's a bit reduced. But, uh, you know, to all those people that normally listen to Rangers and, you know, culture and urban agogi podcasts, you know, we, we, most of us have been stacking a little bit of food away. So we're not panicking uh, yet. Although I'm still going to sort of go and yeah, go shops, not. you know, little and often, you know, just to make sure I'm not delving into my supplies too harshly. Um, who... Could technically be counted among like the normal yeah. viewership. Yeah. Well, but that's because you've got in uh, I am being promoted as fuck. I am being promoted as fuck. Yeah. Um, and I've um had to stay inside for like a lot of um, because I don't want to be in it. Exactly as prepared as everyone else. Hmm. And it means that um I'm looking forward to taking care of and doing during the apocalypse. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, a good plan would be to learn a new skill. On the one hand, yes, but um, on the other hand, like, the pro one of the projects I took on um, is very time-consuming, hmm. very big blanket. It's getting very big, but at the same time, like, so many stitches go into that or something. Hmm. And I have to like work very hard and then keep doing the thing and like if I could get that completed early. Mm. I'll be moving into my place maybe early. I don't know. Well you could do your university work early. Well I mean, I'm gonna be doing my university work anyway. Mm. The worry that I have, isn't it, that if I have to leave my computer here um, some of my university work is on that. Hmm. Well, time to move it off that and put it onto your laptop or whatever it is you're currently using. Uh, yes, my laptop that has no free space because it keeps trying to download Windows up in. Mm -hmm. Oh, British Windows. It's usually with Windows and laptops, so... Yeah, you are, speak, you are rather on this podcast speaking to people that mostly use Linux. Mostly. I just... I like things. I'm sorry. Well, you'll be pleased to know I have built a dual boot USB stick that should be able to rebuild your oh. desktop PC. Nice! So I haven't been completely idle. And I've, 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 already, I've already built a laptop using it, using said stick. So that's kind of cool. 
Is that the laptop? Well, I, I rebuilt the operating system on the laptop. Is it, is it one that could potentially handle um, the things? No. No, it isn't. Of course it's not. Um, it's a laptop. You know, the very few laptops that would be able to play Sims. Yeah, I've got two, but they're both broken. Mm. Well, you know, Obviously, if like, you do I'm end up coming broken. to me and you're getting a lift and somebody's driving you across with your stuff, then... Yeah, I'm bringing, I'm bringing bring my bring laptops and just like, seeing that you're going here. And bring the computer base unit. So I can rebuild it for you. Basically, but yeah, if you bring a base unit, I can rebuild it for you, and then you've got a machine that will probably play The Sims. Yeah, but yeah. But there's, there's things you can catch up on. Um, if anyone wants recommendations, I highly recommend The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance because it's amazing. It's on Netflix. And anybody that's on Rangers has already had the Doctor Who link with all of, all of classic Doctor Who on archive.org. Well, the other one I would like to go and watch was, um, go and watch, uh, what was the name of the Star Trek? I just that was quite interesting because I only watched it the other day. Yeah, they've just released Harvard. the newest episode, it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, and the other one was, was it Discovery? Is that one with Michael Burnham? Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. I enjoyed that one too. And if you, if you haven't watched it, there are now four seasons of The Expanse to watch out there in True. internet land. And The Expanse is but just amazing, it's really good. As, um, once you roll or anything like that and you're looking for a very good anime, there's the Mothery uh, anime, which uh, it has like one of these re really long titles, but um, that's pretty cool. It's about a girl who accidentally like, breaks the game. Oh, and I'd, I'd recommend Steven Universe if you haven't already seen it all. Yeah, Steven Universe. Watch the Steven Universe movie. Um, Watch the Super Universe movie, uh, watch Super Universe. Um, hang on, let me pull up my Netflix tab to see what I've been watching. Oh, but if you want something a bit more intellectual or stimulating where you're going to learn stuff, I would say anything by Mark Steele. Um, the Mark Steele lectures in particular. Uh, anything with James Burke in it, like Connections. He did four seasons of that. Um, anything with David Attenborough in it, it, particularly Life on Earth, the first thing that he did, um, because he wasn't originally known as being a, a naturalist. He was originally the controller of BBC Two, and he holds the distinction of signing Monty Python to BBC Two lineup. Um, yeah, so go and learn some stuff. All the, all the movies, um, yeah, Spirit Away, Mind um, are they all it is. Yeah, I, I, the weird thing about Castle in the Sky is I watched it in the 1970s because it was on because there was, there was uh, uh, sorry, I, it was on in the 1970s and I watched it and nobody would believe that I'd watched it and I totally didn't understand it when I was about eight years old. And they just put it on instead of the Saturday sport. And because at that time, you didn't, people didn't watch television all the time. And pretty much if you're a kid and you weren't into sport, the moment you got to lunchtime on a Saturday, you sort of stopped watching television. So none of my friends had seen it. And they actually showed a, a full-on Studio Ghibli movie instead of uh, Saturday World of Sport, which was on on Saturdays in the UK in the 70s. They couldn't show World of Sport for some reason. I think there was a uh, like an industry strike, and none of the cameramen I'm, were working. I just really love um, Castle in the Sky now that I'm re-watching it. Cause I, I never really understood it before, but yeah, it's also um, known as Laputa. Re watch it, and it's it, yeah, it's, Laputa, and it's based on um, the Jonathan Swift Gulliver's, Gulliver's Travels. Laputa <laughs> is a place within the Gulliver's, the extended Gulliver's Travels story. 
which was an interesting satire on the world as Jonathan Swift saw it. Listen, the fact that it's like, um, the government must absolutely do these things, but also like people are terrible. And I'm like, wow, yes. And this probably sad. goes without saying, but if you have got the opportunity to download stuff that you haven't yet watched, it might be worth using up some internet bandwidth to download a few things in case internet bandwidth comes at a premium. Because you've got a lot of people yeah, working absolutely. at home, you've got a lot more people home during the day, or you will have, and internet bandwidth, your allowance of internet bandwidth may be rationed by your ISP. So right now is a very good time to download things to your computers and save them for watching for later. I'm just saying. Just really, so really, really find a few things that you, watch you can download. One day at a time, The Witcher. Oh, um, The End of the Fucking the World was a great series. Um, and uh, what was I watching recently that was real good? It's, it's just come out on Netflix. It's about a girl with psychic powers, a bit like Carrie. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. It one of the best series that I've seen on Netflix is actually Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Mm. Uh, that's really good. But Netflix does have a lot but, of entire series, like if you haven't seen Deep Space Nine or um, Enterprise, now would probably be a good time to get up on that. Uh, where's my... my list? Probably... Well, this probably sounds like very cynical. Netflix is probably going to make like a shit ton of money. Well, what, it's not going to make any more money because every, everybody's subscribed to it. The people that have Netflix are like, but you know, pretty much anybody that wants to subscribe to Netflix, you know, is uh, is subscribed. I don't think they'll get many more subscribers. I mean, I, I guess if you just had ordinary television and you and but you had an internet connection and you hadn't yet got a Netflix subscription, I think people will be signing up for it. Especially since I think they do a thirty-day free trial. Mm -hmm. But most people that sign up to it stay stay with Netflix because they they do a lot of their own content. Uh, oh. uh. Um, okay, well we'll shut this down. So we've been recording for just over an hour. So yeah, so this is uh, COVID-19 podcast number one, and I'll be uploading it at some point. Uh, thank you to uh, Bambi Bart and Harlequin for joining in. And if you want to join in and you're part of the Rangers thing, or you are within the sound of my voice, just leave a comment below and we'll see what we can do. Maybe we need to uh, um, put in a new channel on this or build a new discord server called isolation ward or something um, and that way we can invite people to it without necessarily cross inviting them to uh, you know the whole of the rangers thing so yeah so watch this space and uh, yeah we'll be uh, putting stuff out a little more regularly or when we can find a few people that want to put together a podcast this podcast was recorded by the letters O, B and S the uh, online broadcasting software which is available free for all platforms thank you very much guys that's it's really handy for doing stuff like this so it's goodbye from me goodbye from me and goodbye from me yeah see you later